This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, this is Laura Summer, the original voice of Janine Melnitz on The Real Ghostbusters, and you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. Ow oh, fudge! Tommy brought his own slime! Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming Cheryl Chase. She is a voiceover legend. Everybody knows her as the voice of Angelica Pickles on the Nickelodeon classic cartoon show Rugrats. I have uh, Melanie Chardoff to thank for the connection there. And um, it's going to be great to have her on the show today. She's also done voices for cartoons like Ren and Stimpy and Foofer and... She, I found like one on-camera job in acting for her. She did a TV movie biopic of the Osmonds back in like the early 80s. And it's going to be great to have her on the show today. She has a book coming out, children's book called That's Kula Tallulah. That's a, that's a priceless, priceless name. I like that. And it's going to be great to have her on the show today. I hope you all had a happy Easter. It was very emotional for me, but I got through it, and I'm very grateful for what I have, especially all you listeners out there who listen to this show on a regular basis. I hope you all exist, so thank you all so much. So yeah, here is my interview with Cheryl Chase. Cheryl? Tommy? Hey, welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I am great. Great. Just uh, recovering from Easter weekend. <laughs> oh, yes. Aren't we all? <laughs> now it's back to the old grind. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So, let's get into the book first. Um, that's, okay. cool, that's Kula Tallulah is what it's called. Uh, this is a children's book. Now, obviously, you've been doing voices for animation for a very long time, but what made you want to write a children's book at this late in the game? Well, um, I've always loved to write, and I'm a very creative person. So, writing children's books is another, besides voiceover, it's another form of to form for me to express my creativity. And I was uh, talking to my mom a few years ago about this little story about a little girl and her doll, um, who's a, a mischievous little doll. And she really liked the story so much she wanted me to write a children's book about it and to dedicate it to her. And I thought, oh no, you know, does that mean she's going to die? Because I'm round at that at that time she was she was having some health issues that you know were a little scary, and I was taking care of her. And unfortunately, she did pass away, which was devastating. Which oh. made me even more dedicated and devoted to to make this book happen and make it a reality. And I did dedicate the book to her. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm so sorry you had to go through that, though. Oh, thank you, thank you. But I'm sure she's very happy of what's going on now with the success of the book. So um, I'm sure she's looking down on me very proud. <laughs> yes, I, I imagine she is. Now, I, I've only talked to, like, one other person who's written a children's book. I can imagine it's not like writing a memoir or a piece of fiction. It's, it's probably not as grueling or tedious, or is it? Well, it's... I wouldn't call it grueling or tedious, but it's very, it's time consuming. And a children's book is only a limited amount of words. You have to get it between four to 600 words. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big challenge that children's book writers have to, to adhere to. Um, because when you're writing a novel or, you know, a fantasy, I mean, you could go on and, you know, have thousands and thousands of words, but to get your point across, you know, in a way to reach children and to talk to them in a language that they understand, that, that's a, that is a challenge, yes, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that uh, children's books have always been rooted in poetry, you know, with the... Um, rhyming words and so forth. Um, does, it, does this book have that? Uh, was it difficult to write? No, it wasn't difficult to 
at all. Um, there, there's no. I, I don't really. Um, actually, traditional publishers they frown from what my experience in trying to get a traditional publishing deal. They, they frown on on rhyme in certain, certain instances unless you unless you're really good at it. You know, unless you're really experienced at it and have done it many many times. Because there's many beautiful poetic uh, rhyming books out there. Um, I do play a little bit with the words in That's Cool and Tallulah. So, you, you know, you can find the book find the book on Amazon and you can read about it and see what I did <laughs> with, <laughs> with the wording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the, what was the book shelved because of the pandemic? No, actually, no. Um, I started writing the book in the pandemic. When, when we, it, it, the wow. pandemic started in March of last year, and that's basically when I started getting busy on it. I, I, you know, wrote wrote the manuscript, and um, I hired an artist, a very a beautiful artist. She, her work is, uh, her name is Giulia Iacopini, mm -hmm. and she's from Italy. And I happened to see one of her books, and I admired her work so well with the colors and her choose her choice of color. And so I, I, I just I went out on a whim and tried to um, get a hold of her, and it it just so happened that she was available and wanted to work on the project. So that was a real joy for me because everybody just loves the artwork in my book. They just everybody says how much. It's so beautiful, and um, so I'm quite honored to be able to have her. And that's why I chose to self-publish as opposed to really trying to get a traditional publishing deal. Is you get a self-publisher gets the opportunity to choose their own artist and mm -hmm. how the book is going to look. Because if you go a traditional route, you don't have any control over that whatsoever. The publisher picked the the artist the 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 illustrator right. that they feel would be good for your project. You don't have any creative say whatsoever on it. So that's why I didn't want to go that route. And I just did it myself. Oh, good for you. Wow, you write fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, this yeah. just happens. Sometimes it takes, sometimes you can write a book, you know, in, in a short amount of time, like a few months. Other times it takes a few years. Right. It all depends. Right. You plan on writing any more? Yes, I have my second book. It's in. It's being illustrated right now. It should be out the end of the year. It's called The Perfect Princess Party. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my next book. It's in the Stella Bella uh, Tallulah. Uh, the book series is called Tallulah Time, yeah. and that's and that is what is going to be out at the end of the year. Nice, nice. You should uh, 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 prom promote that one on here as well. <laughs> oh, when, sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, when the time comes, of course. Now, I, I'm sure you've heard there's been a crazy controversy going around with uh, Dr. Seuss books being banned for being racist or what have you. What, what do you make of that? Well, uh, I, to tell you the truth, I've been so busy, I haven't been paying much attention to the news. But, um, you know, these days everybody is so hypersensitive yeah. to, to um, comments out there and people's opinions. And, and it's just coming from everybody's POV, their point of view. And, you know, the Dr. Seuss books were written in a different time period. So yeah. the audience was different. They had different experiences in their lives as opposed to what we as a, as a society have experienced in our lives. So that's why I guess you know, maybe um, things that were written a certain way can hit a person harder or, or affect them more on a deeper level than these days than it did back then. I mean, I, I have to say I'm sorry. I don't know all the particulars on, on that. Yeah, there's like six okay. books being banned. In, in my opinion, there are his lesser books, like, like later from later on and stuff, uh, ones that I didn't grow up uh, reading. But yeah, it's okay. just it's just all crazy, you know. And of course, they they canceled Pepe Le Pew because he represents rape culture. They said. <laughs> oh my gosh, that that's crazy! I didn't hear that. My I have friends in the cartoon world. Yeah. So that that yeah that's 
That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's been in the last month or so. Yeah, it's 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 insane. You know, I just I just hope that this is all a, a temporary side effect. <laughs> I hope so too. That's a shame. Poor Peppy. Yeah. That's the pew. <laughs> <laughs> so. Going back in time, did you know early on that uh, you wanted to do voices for cartoons? Well, when I was younger, I always liked to um, imitate voices, and um, I, I used to watch the when I was little. Um, this will date me, but I watched the Carol Burnett show. Oh. I loved the different characters that she did on on her show, and I and then I created some of my own. Um, and, but I, I, I was walking, when I was in college, I was walking down the street, and I was talking to my friends, not thinking anything of it, and somebody ran up to me and said, you sound just like Glenda the Good Witch of the Wizard of Oz. And I, and I thought, oh, that's very interesting. And so I, tr- I, I, I watched the movie, which you had to wait till it was on TV, because they didn't have the DVDs or, uh, you know, these days. So right. I found out, and I imitated, and I found out that I can do all, all the voices, you know, in Munchkin Land and, and uh, Glenda the Good Witch. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> so then I found out that I could do, you know, those voices. And, you know, when I went, and I started you know, taking classes, mm-hmm. and I got a demo tape, and I started to try to get to get work in voiceover. That was so, a... Um, it, yeah, so it took a little while. It took me about four years before I finally got my... When I moved to California back in the 80s, it took me four years to finally get a series, I, 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 which was the Rugrats and the Ren and Stimpy show. So I had to wait a little longer, but the wait, the wait was worth it. Yeah, wow. That was, that was a very good impression of the of the Good Witch. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks so much. That was that was very dead on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she started she started my career in voiceover, Glenda the Good Witch. So I'm very grateful. Oh, what what cartoons uh, did you specifically like growing up? Um, I liked Bugs Bunny, and I liked the Flintstones, and Top Cat, and Gigantor, and, um, yeah, basically, you know, any cartoon, um, yeah, I had, I had my favorites, yes. Yeah, I, I was a, a big fan of the cartoons from my, uh, parents' generation, because, uh, you know, I have a, a better appreciation for the cartoons I grew up with now than I did then, because even then I was just like, God, these, you know, these are cartoons based on toys, you know, and the, the right. ge- generation before that, they were original characters, you know, based off of, uh, like, old uh, vaudeville and comedians, like Top Cat was Phil Silvers, you know, and Fred Flintstone was Jackie Gleason. I mean, exactly, I, I like exactly. That, I like that kind of stuff, you know, I love the underdog. Yeah, I did too. They, it's just that they had, they were real characters. And as opposed, like you say, as opposed to commercials for toys. Right. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I uh, yeah, and, and that's another good thing about, you know, about Rugrats is the writing. They were real characters. The, the writers, they, they, they wrote the scripts so that there's jokes for the adults and there's jokes for the kids. And, right. and and both audiences related to them. And that's like, like uh, Bugs Bunny, you know. They were made for adults. You, they, they were made for going into the mo- you know, going to a movie and seeing a cartoon before the movie. And so it was really for an adult audience. And when I was little, I didn't understand all the jokes. But now, I do. And it's, you know, it's just, you know, brilliant on, on their, their, their part. Yeah, only in recent years I've I've gotten into uh, Rugrats because when I was a kid I loved The Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead, the more adult oriented cartoon stuff. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, it's pretty cool now and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so how how did Rugrats come to you? How did it come to me? Well, I was working at the um the um uh, in the production offices at the Ren and Stimpy on the Ren and Stimpy show. Right. And, you know, I had an audition, and I went, uh, you know, it's called The Rugrats, it was The Rugrats, and it was a pilot. And they had two characters. They had Tommy, and they had um, Phil and Will. They had, well, three characters. So I tried out for them. I didn't hear anything back. It was for a pilot. So 
Um, I, I they didn't have Angelica and Chucky. They they just had those those three. And so a year and a half went by, and um, uh, Nickelodeon bought the pilot, which made it was going to go into a series. So they had to make more characters. So mm. they you know created Chucky and Angelica. So I went and I auditioned and I got Angelica and. How I found out, I was doing um, background voice work on The Simpsons. I was just, you know, you know, doing in the studio doing that, and then I got a call from my agent, and they said, "Oh, you got a, you got the Rugrats, you're Angelica," and I and I, I just thought, "Oh my gosh, that's so exciting!" Because I was waiting to get a real, you know, a series. But at that point, we didn't know how successful it was going to be. We didn't even know it was going to be. We didn't know we were going to last the first season. So it really grew up into a, a big, huge global phenomenon. Yeah, and um, are are you just amazed at like the impact of how it's lasted this long and how the it's affected the culture? Yes, I am, and it's it's um, it's a blessing to be a part of such a, a grand, grand show. Um, I, I again, I, I think it's because the writing and the acting and the artwork, it just all the good elements came together to make this great show and it impacted families lives that I have you know today these days I have adults coming up to me saying to me oh you were part of my childhood I'm, I'm so happy to meet you and and they really are affected some of them even tear up in their you know they tear up because they get so excited they're meeting a childhood icon of theirs and it really makes me humbled and grateful that I was a part of, of their growing up and, you know, maybe could have made some difference in their life. You know, how cartoons can affect, you know, and make impressions when you're a young child. Um, of course. So, yeah, um, I, um, I'm so glad to be a part of it. You know, uh, what, did you draw Angelica's voice on, on somebody you knew? Down and she it said she was a three-year-old little girl and so I thought hmm, how would I sound like a three-year-old and I in to, in order to make that happen you just have to squeeze your vocal cords really really <laughs> tight and then you sound your voice goes really high and if you want to sound like a baby you squeeze them even tighter and then you sound like uh, yeah. you just squeeze your vocal cords really tight but you have to have really thin vocal cords to do that. Right. The, um, pe the people that, you know, men usually have thicker vocal cords than women, so it's impossible for them to sound like a baby. But, yeah, but yeah there's just little techniques that you can do to, to get the right voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad um, Melanie connected us because I did a fun interview with her um, back in January. It was, it was like three years in the making and it was worth the wait. Her and I shared a, a warped sense of humor because we both come from stand-up comedy and so oh how nice that's great yeah I'm, I'm glad she connected us yeah yeah she's great and eg I, yes. I i met her five years ago at a convention and she was just an absolute doll yeah she's a nice lady yeah yeah i i don't i i i, I don't really hang out with the girls i just go and i do my job and because we don't really work together, we, we work separately. So um, we, when we go into the recording studio, that's our time, you know, they schedule us for an hour or two or three or however, depending on how long our parts are. And then we go in and we just work with the director and do our job and just go home. Well, nowadays we have, we, we work in our recording studios. Right, yeah, at, at in home. In our home, yeah. Yeah, I mean the technology is so brilliant now. I mean, you can be on a yacht in the Caribbean and record your voice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, that's technology for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I said to E.G., my name is Tommy, and she was like, "That's my name too." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So you re you mentioned to me that you could um, talk about the reboot um, that Nickelodeon is doing. Um, so uh -huh. what can you tell me about the reboot? Well, that it's it's done in CG. It's it's computerized. It's not 2D animation. It's 3D animation, and I think it's beautiful. It it um it looks 
stunning. The colors, the the, the backgrounds, mm-hmm. the, the even the the details of their clothing and their socks and their sandals. It it the detail is is gorgeous, and you're going to notice. I, I I like it now. It, the kid the the Rugrats uh, the reboot was made for the kids of today, right. and they're used to seeing 3D animation, so it's not going to be a problem for them. But sometimes the the um, I've heard um, you know. Some of the 90s kids that grew up with the 2D animation, the original, um, it's going to take them a little time to get used to it. But they will, because it's so great. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's going to look, it, it's going to be, it's eye candy, I call it. Is it going to be and a... you'll be... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, is it going to be a show or is it going to be a movie? No, it's, a, it's an animated show. We're, we're, we're doing 26 episodes. Nice, twenty six episodes. Yeah, and it's that's going to be on. And it's going to be it's going to be on Paramount Plus. Oh, oh God, Paramount Plus is like is like you know hot right now. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, I've noticed. Well, God, we, I've been hearing a lot yeah. about Paramount Plus. Plus, yeah. Well, we're hoping that uh, you know there's going to be a lot of subscribers and people are going to want to get the channel just because Rugrats is on it. So. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm looking forward to, because we've been living with this and not being able to talk about it for so long, and right. now we finally can be open about it, and and so it's kind of like, ah, oh, we can breathe now, because it was so frustrating, because we knew we were working on such a great show, and, you know, we have the original voices back, and we have some, some uh, great, um, on. Uh, we have a lot of on-camera actors for the adult, for the adult um uh, part of the show, so um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be a sensational, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how was working on on uh, Ren and Stimpy? Oh, that was pretty crazy. You mm-hmm. know, John Chris Felucci, he's a crazy person, um, <laughs> but I survived. And um, it, you know, I, I was working in the um, um, uh, in the production offices. I was in production and I was a casting director and I was a receptionist and I was like, you know, they give me different jobs to do. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and like a lot of times, um, actors that would go into the booth with John, they couldn't, I mean, he, you can't, he, he's very, um, intimidating sometimes, but because of my experience, I didn't have a problem. You know, I, I stood right up to him and gave him what he wanted and, and, uh, you know, I didn't cower in fear or anything, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's a different person, but, um, yeah, it, it was, it was great working at Ren and Stimpy. It, it, they, they gave me the freedom to, um, go to other auditions and do, I would do Rugrats on Friday afternoons, every Friday, he'd let me get away to do that, which was nice of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, I, I thought the Red Stippy was a very funny show. That 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 show needs to come back, I think, too. You know, I heard it's not coming back. That's yeah. what I heard. That yeah. there were talks about it. Uh, yeah, it would have been great because Bob Camp, you know, he was one of the creators of of um, the Ren and Stippy show, and he he's fantastic. He's a brilliant artist. And he would have been amazing to be able to bring it back, but I, I think I heard that there's too much repercussions, you know, of you know, of John Chris Lucy. He he was he had a screw loose and he was yeah. acting inappropriately with women. Oh. So that yeah, that that kind of showed that. But I mean I, I don't I, I don't know all the particulars. So yeah. Well, that's good that's good that uh, you weren't privy to uh, his plan, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so we, anyway, but uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thankful to be in the cartoon world. It's, it's a wacky world being in cartoons. It is. It is. Now we we all know how inaccurate um, IMDb can be. Uh, it said that uh, you 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 worked on the cartoon Foofers, or Foofer. Um, I, to be honest with you, I don't remember. I I might have, I'm sure if it's there that I did it, but, um, it's been so long ago, I don't, I don't remember. 
Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and and there's and there's a lot of things that I did and I didn't. I mean, it's my fault. I didn't keep up with IMDb and put on as many credits because there's some credits that I did that aren't on there. Um, but yeah. No, Foo Force. I, I, I. It sounds vaguely familiar. Maybe I did do it. I don't know. Yeah, because I talked to I talked to Michael Bell and Susan Silo from it. Uh huh. Yeah. Did they mention? Did they mention me? I, I can't. I can't remember. But like, I, I remember. I've, I've talked to those two from it though. But um, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It, it, it's it's yeah. fu- it's funny when you're so prolific and you do so much work that you actually forget certain things. You know. I know. Yeah. It's it, and and age does that. Time when time goes by, you kind of like forget it. Were you in the um, the Osmonds TV movie Side by Side? Yes, I was. It was really fun. That's how I got my SAG card. Mm-hmm. And that was my, my big, you know, on-camera job. Um, <clears throat> and it was, like, so cool because I, I told my parents, uh, I said, one day I'm going to be on Johnny Carson. One day, yeah, that is, again, that dates me, you know. <laughs> but when I was younger, I said to them, I'm going to be on Johnny Carson. And when I, when I did um, um, Side by Side, uh, Marie was on Johnny Carson, and she did take a piece of film that I was in. So it's like technically I was on Johnny Carson. So hey, you know that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> were Were you on the trajectory of being an on camera actress at that point? You know, I tried to do on camera, but nothing really clicked. It didn't really click because voiceover. I was getting jobs in voiceover, and I thought, hmm, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. So, you know, when I moved out to California, I, I just pursued voiceover and, and you know, I never looked back. Now, I still do have aspirations of going on camera, mm-hmm. So, um, when, but see, I'm so busy right now, I, 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 I can't really focus on that. So, yeah. and I'm, I'm doing some projects right now where I, I'm not at liberty to talk about, as opposed to the Rugrats, I, I can talk about the Rugrats, but there's other projects that I, I still can't talk about yet that are that are in the works. But, yeah, I'm oh, too busy. I'm really busy. Yeah. Are we going to see anything like Rugrats in space or anything like that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should talk to some of the writers. They might have an insight into that. <laughs> but uh, it, that does sound interesting, though, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, is there going to be any, like, you know, um, update on, like, the storyline or anything like that? Um, uh, updates on the storyline. Um, yeah. But, oh, oh, you mean like what? What the show was about? Yeah. Uh, oh well, I mean it's basically it's like the Rugrats in modern day. It, okay. Because back then it was in the '90s, and you know they have flat screen TVs now, and um, you know they, oh um, uh, Betty, the voice. Uh, I don't know who the, I don't know who the lady who does the voice of Betty, but. Betty was the mom of Phil and Will, right? And and so she is not married. She's not married now. She's single. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't have her um, having a husband in the first. So there's little changes here and there that you'll see. Okay, awesome. Yeah, but you want to be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned that there's uh, stuff on IMDb that's not mentioned. Anything you want to mention? Oh, um, yeah, I don't remember. I can't recall offhand because there's quite a few of them, and um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't. It's okay. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's okay. Um, have you done any of the uh, the virtual Comic Con since the pandemic? haven't but I, I've done a I've, you know I'm doing a lot of podcasts and I, I did uh, a reaction video uh, I did a, a company wanted me to uh, mm-hmm. watch the Rugrats and have me um, react to them so that I did that recently re, you know to have a you know my react funny reactions to the show so I did I did do that recently yeah but I didn't do any comic cons no Mm-hmm. Has there been very many out there? Because um, I know um, 
you know, the one out of San Diego is is that's virtual, so I, I don't know how they handle that. Yeah, the, the the Wizard World ones. They've been doing a lot of those. I've been seeing a lot of advertisements for them. Uh, the 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 horror con world. They've been doing a ton of those. Um, oh. They're still they they're doing they're doing in person ones like in different parts of the world not in California unfortunately but um, uh-huh. in different parts of the world yeah and I I personally you know won't um, won't take part in them because it, they're they're just awkward and I don't do Zoom so yeah yeah I, yeah I'm not that tech savvy either I mean I do do Zoom but um, yeah I mean uh, I know what you're talking about yeah they can be awkward. I mean, you know, the SAG Awards was on the other night, and, you know, they I, I didn't watch them. I heard about them, and I saw the clips on TV, and mm-hmm. everyone's at their house or in their car accepting the award. And <laughs> I kind of miss having, having them, you know, go into, you know, a venue and having them everyone be there, which is that's what's going to happen with the Oscars, thank goodness, that the, the stars are going to be going to, you know, a venue, and we'll be able to see them, you know. So, but yeah, I know what you're meaning, how it's going to be awkward, how it's awkward with the Comic-Con. Yeah, comedians are doing shows and drive-ins, and they're not getting heckled. The people are just driving off. <laughs> oh, no. How funny. That's yeah. hilarious. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you better not. You better not have any abandonment issues if you're the comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I I've been taking a break from stand up for a while now and stuff, but I just I've been hearing about them, you know. I just think yeah, it's a crazy time we're in, and hopefully it's only temporary. Yeah, it's only temporary. Everyone's getting vaccinated. I got my first shot the other day, and you know it's it's slowly coming around. I got my first shot two weeks ago, and I'm getting my um, next one uh, the week after the week after this week, next week. So. Yeah, I get mine the end of the month, so I, I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting. So, um, that's Kula Tulula is available on Amazon now? Yes, it is. It's available on Amazon. And um, I'm, uh, I got a couple of five-star reviews already, so I'm kind of happy about that. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't trust release dates on Amazon anymore because I've, I've I've talked to a few people who had book who had books out that were either out you know like months before or they weren't even out yet so I have to ask if they're available you know now or whatever yeah yes they're available now it was uh, launched on March 30th so it is available for purchase awesome well I hope the book continues being successful for you and I hope uh, we get to talk at the end of the year when the next one comes out. Oh, thank you, Tommy. I, I, I hope so, too. That would be lovely. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad Melanie could connect us, and I hope uh, you have a, a great, safe day. And I hope you, too. And keep on writing. <laughs> thank you so much, Tommy. You keep on doing what you're doing. I will. Uh, thank you so much. I will. My pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Cheryl Chase. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, what a nice lady, huh? And she's entertaining the children. That is so awesome. That's Kula Tulula is available on Amazon. Check it out if you have kids. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes. <laughs>